Hi, this is John Van Lunen, and you are listening to Treasures of the Outer Banks. In this podcast, we talk to people who live on the Outer Banks, and through their stories, we'll explore what makes this place so special. So if you downloaded this podcast to find out where the gold is hidden, my apologies. But if you want to meet the people we treasure on this sandbar, stick around. I'm sure you'll enjoy their stories of history, local personalities, and community. This is the Steve the Dream episode. In this podcast, I have the pleasure to talk to Becky DeMarco about her big brother, Steve. Steve and I were good friends. Um, He lived right down the street from me. We had daughters about the same age. We were both stay-at-home dads. We were just two bumbling guys just trying to keep things together. If he ever got into a jam, he'd call me. And if I ever got into a jam, I could call him. We'd always come running to help each other out. He was an avid surfer, so he knew that whole culture and group of guys. He also worked all over the beach at restaurants and stuff, waiting tables, what have you. And he also had his traveling DJ show for parties and weddings that he was very popular with. What some people don't know and what we'll be talking about on the show is that he was a model and actor. He dropped everything to go up to New York City and got his big break and did that for quite a while and did it very well and made some great friends up there. Unfortunately, we lost Steve in a surfing accident in 2010, and the community was devastated, including myself. Treasures of the Outer Banks is inspired by Steve because I remember at the time, I said, we just lost an Outer Banks treasure. And that kind of motivated me to start this website and the podcast so that I could learn more about these people and share their stories on this website and podcast. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Becky DeMarco. Always feel free to stop by treasuresoftheouterbanks.com and see what we're up to. You and Steve grew up in Virginia, just outside of D.C., right? Yes. Excellent. Uh, Gainesville, is that right? No, no. We were born, uh, I was born in Washington, D.C. I think Steve was too. And we grew up, uh, I was born... And we lived in Falls Church for a time, and then we moved to Vienna, Virginia when I was three. So Paul, uh, Steve would have been, you know, 10, 11-ish. Gotcha. And so your mom had a, uh, she had her own house for exceptional children. Yes. Up to, up to 20 kids? Yeah. we The home that we lived in, the house that we moved into when we moved to Vienna, Virginia, it was just a big old, uh, you know, kind of a, it was a big house. It had fairly good size rooms and everything. And she just, she worked for a school for handicapped children and she started bringing the children home with her. So the, um, you know, she, first it was just a few, two or three, then, you know, and then this one and that one. And the next thing you know, we had 20 kids in the house wow. with us. So we subdivided the backyard and built a school for them. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, Uh, uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's not everybody's upbringing. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I was a pretty selfish kid. I think I would have said, you know, I want my own room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Right. (laughs) I hear you. But in some ways it sounds like, uh, you know, Steve always had a roommate. Is that right? Always. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, he and Mike shared room when they were young boys. And then, uh, you know, once this, once we had the school and mom started bringing kids home, he, he shared a room with a couple of kids and I shared a room with one cause I was kind of a smallish room and, uh, yep. Wow. That was and you guys too. just worked around the house and helped out as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he did all the normal things. He played baseball and football and we, we did all the normal stuff, but we just had that extra element of lots of people living in the house with us. Um, you know, porter cribs all around the dining room table. (laughs) That's that's hilarious. Yeah. And, um, you mentioned that, you know, I, 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 I always tell people, Steve, uh, was uh, he loved to entertain? And oh yeah! You, 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 it sounds like he got his start entertaining these little kids. Can you tell me a little oh, bit about yeah. that? Oh yeah, he always he always had something going on. He was he was a great mimic, and uh, 
So there would there was always that element of things. But he liked to sing and he always liked to dance. And, you know, he'd put on even back then he'd put on the records and we'd have, you know, dancing out on the back porch. And <laughs> just, you know, if he had free time, he he was he was always a cut up and very silly having fun. You know, he liked to have fun. Right. Yeah. That's too funny. So he. He graduates from high school and he marries his high school sweetheart, Grace. He did, yes. And and how how quickly before they moved to Hawaii? Well, it wasn't more than a couple of years, I think, because um, the boys were still pretty little. Uh, Jay was probably four, maybe four or five at the top, very top end, and uh, maybe four. And You're the middle. You're the middle child, right? I, I am the youngest. My eldest youngest. brother was nine years older than me, and Steve okay. was seven years older than me. Okay. So they were pretty close in age and very good friends growing up. Very different personalities, but uh, to to Mike's quiet, Steve was gregarious, you know? <laughs> so I have trouble visualizing that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so... And so, so what, what took them to Hawaii surfing or just something yes, else? Yes, surfing. I think he, he always, you know, he, even when we were, you know, I can't, he met a couple of guys in Vienna that also had a, had a notion of being surfers, you know, so they would, they would take any chance they could to go to the beach. They would go to ocean city. They would go to Virginia beach. They, and then he met this one, uh, a couple of guys, the Blackwelder boys, and they had been to the Outer Banks and they took him there. And that was love at first sight. He just yeah. really loved the Outer Banks from the, from the get go. So, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too big of a leap. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to be a surfer. So all of those magazines, the surfing magazines and everything, Hawaii. Yeah, he was yeah. going to the North Shore. He had to see I, that. I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland. And when I graduated high school, Hawaii was not even in my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to hop on a plane and go all the way to Hawaii to live. Right, that, yeah. That's a pretty gutsy move. It was, you know, he, he definitely had a... a he had something inside of him that really wanted to experience the different parts of the world and to see other realities. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so how many, how many years do you think he was in uh, Hawaii? I think he was only there a year or so. I don't think he That's was there very long. And I think he migrated back to the OBX soon thereafter. He did. He did. Yes. Very soon after. And that's kind of where that, that uh, notion of, um, going to New York and uh, he did all the DJing to support that event to move. Um, that took a couple of years. He, he spent a couple of years doing that circuit and he, that, that was where he really developed all those characters that he used to do <laughs> in his DJing. Yes. On his, on his first round of the OBX. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was where that all started. You know, he would, he, that was where he had that, you know, he had the greaser guy with the, with the gas station attendant look, you know, yeah. with his hair, his comb. And so, so, <laughs> so let's pause for just a second because yes. what, what Becky is talking about is the persona, Steve, the dream. Yes. Um, so this is when all this kind of became developed is when he first, when he, after he left Hawaii, he wound up on the outer banks, I guess I, I, I said, return to the outer banks, but he, he is probably his first round of actually living at the outer banks. And, that's when he kind of created this DJ persona, uh, just doing nightclubs and and stuff, uh, and, and developing this character and just and making money, right? Yes, yeah. He had a standing uh, job at I can't remember the name of the places in Chapel Hill or in um, Greenville. Greenville, but definitely he was at the Tap Room. <laughs> it was he, he had a standing night at the tap room and you know he always did the he worked worked at the sea fair with all the guys you know mike right. kelly and his crew and um so that was a part of his life and even at that point and um 
let's see, what else could I tell you about that? Uh, he worked at, um, I want to say he lived next to the um, Harris grocery store. Was there a Harris family? There was a, there was a bakery right there. Anyway, he worked at the bakery and he lived upstairs right next to, was there a Gray's? Um, That's what you told me before is that uh, he lived above yeah. the Gray department store on the beach road? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he lived on the beach road. It was right next door to a bakery, and he worked at that bakery. And right. he lived upstairs, he and Grace and the boys. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what did Grace think about all this? Oh, she, you know, she just, she was a trooper. She went along pretty, pretty readily, and uh, she was, um, she was a great mom and she worked at a lot, all the different places too. She was also, uh, um, she worked at Evans Crab House and she worked, you know, she did a lot of things wow. that you would typically do when you're living on the beach as a young person. And right. she worked as a dental hygienist, I think. I remember her working at the Holiday Inn. Yeah, she had a lot of, a lot of things going on too. Typical outer banker. <laughs> yep, exactly. We, we all have like three jobs. Exactly. You got to do that to, to keep it going, you know? So, so at some point, um, he decides that he's going to put together his portfolio and try to be a model. That's right. Yeah. After his marriage broke up, he, he definitely, that was the route he took. And uh, Ray Matthews did his, um, trying to think of the name of that card, the, the, you know, you have your... You have your card that you hand out to everybody. Headshot. His headshot. Oh, headshot. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. Sorry. Right. No problem. So yeah. So he he had Ray Matthews do his headshots, and uh, you know he just started putting his money away, living living rough. You know how you do when you're a surfer at the beach. You don't really need a lot. You had your surfboard, right. your your uh, clothes to work, your weight jobs, and. Uh, his his outfits for his uh for his entertaining as a dj right. was that was about all he needed so <laughs> and so he saved up his money he goes to new york city <laughs> right did, it, did was he all in did he move out and just take all of his belongings up to new york city he did yeah wow. he was all in he went and he just started knocking on doors um he got a few interviews you know with the uh, modeling agencies and at the time wilhelmina man was one of the top you know, Ford, Wilhelmina, that sort of thing. So he um, got hired by Wilhelmina Men and stayed and with by the them way, right along. Uh, by the way, I uh, I did Google that Wilhelmina Men, and if you dig, if you do a search on their website, you can find Steve Thomas, and you can see some of his photo shots. It's uh, it's pretty cool, oh. you know. Yeah, it is cool, right? Some of those things stay forever. <laughs> yeah, I guess one of the few things good about the internet, right? <laughs> Indeed, right? So he, um, so he just hunkers down and just starts hustling and and yeah, start, really starts to do did. some really big stuff. He did. That was so uh, you you mentioned he went to Milan. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes, he did. He was in Milan. He, he was in he, Paris. He, was was he that was, kind of at the big? Was that at the beginning or was that kind of in the middle? I want to say that he went to Milan to begin with, um, but he lived he lived for a year or two overseas, you know, in different places. Wow. So, yeah, he definitely. Um, and he was a runway. You know, he, he would do some runway modeling. I think so. Yes, you know, I can't really speak to exactly what his um, all of his his jobs were. He, yeah. I know he had, you know, he did catalog work. He did some magazines he did um he was in the sunday paper pretty much every weekend um <laughs> you know yeah so he did all the all the stuff you you do to get by especially when he was in new york but in in uh in europe i think he did all of the other types of modeling right. like the runway and the and um standard photo shoots and things like that right I, uh, my notes say that he was mostly in a, he mostly did apparel in magazines mm -hmm. and he did apparel. And I feel like I've seen a few of these photos myself. Cause I think his wife, Ann shared them 
with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calvin Klein, maybe yep. Jordash. He was mm-hmm. in the Esquire magazine, the GQ magazine. Yes. I mean, pretty imp- impressive resume right there, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. And then, um, you know, tell me, you know, you, did, you mentioned the Sunday papers and catalogs. And oh, by the way, a friend of mine on the Outer Banks here, they were, they were in a, a thrift store inland somewhere and they picked up like a, a Sears catalog and there was Steve Thomas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ma- it was pro- he was probably modeling leisure suits or something. I don't know. Yes, definitely <laughs> leisure suits. That was a real popular one. And uh, underwear, long underwear. Um, yes, all of the above. <laughs> Too funny. No problem. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Wynn. Can I call you back? Okay, bye. I forgot to turn that off. Let me <laughs> no do <problem>. that now. <laughs> okay. And so, um, okay. yeah, so, during, so during, we were talking about the time, catalog shoots and all of that. And yeah. um, he, I think when he got back to New York is when he started doing some, uh, uh, I think he took some acting classes because he did, he did a few commercials. And um, he did things like, uh, I want to say signal mouthwash and yeah. uh, maybe caress soap, um, some shampoo commercials. It was really interesting. I remember being um, being at the kitchen sink in my house <laughs> and the TV was on in the other room. And I said, oh, is Steve here? And I went <laughs> around the corner and there he was on TV. I was like, oh. TV. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah. And I, he did I, when, when we're different. done with this, I got to Google some of those TV commercials and see yeah, if I can right? dig anything up. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. So he's, he's a model. Um, he's mostly in New York. If, when he's not in Milan, he's probably in New York city. Right. Sure. And then he, and then at some point he starts dating Patty Hanson who, by the way, in 1983, married Keith Richards, and she was a pretty popular model. <laughs> so, pretty popular, yes. T- tell me the story about your, your high school graduation. Yeah, actually, it was college graduation, so oh. 1975, <laughs> I guess. And, uh, yeah, she yeah she came to my graduation with Steve. <laughs> so Hilarious. that was fun, because I was in Vermont, so not too big of a leap from New York City. Right. So, yeah, that was unexpected, but sweet. That is hilarious. And just by the way, um, uh, she was, you said she was on the cover of a couple magazines that the same first month. Time I met her, the first time I met her, um, I think he brought her home. It was maybe Christmas time. And, uh, and he said, Oh, yeah, well, Patty's going to come down for a visit. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> that month she was on Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, and Glamour magazine all at the same time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Not intimidating at all, but she was she was very down to earth and just a yeah. delightful person. So good to hear. You know, the persona wanna... was didn't really match the personality. How about that? Okay. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. And you exactly. can't imagine Steve being with somebody that was no. anything other, right? No. You know, Absolutely a good not. person. Yeah. So um I, I hate to sound stupid, but I wonder how that breakup went, you know? Oh, right? I don't know. Yeah. You're just too good looking for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, too funny. And so back then, and, and, you know, we're probably dating ourselves, but Studio 54 was a big disco tech in New York City. And yes. uh, you had to wait in line to get into the disco. And you said Steve used to get in. How did how did he get into the disco? Yeah, you know, I never heard about how he got in, but I knew he was there. I, I definitely know that, uh, you know, there were stories uh, that he would sprinkle in from time to time <laughs> of, his, of his days living that life. Yes. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Um, yeah. The way I look, I probably couldn't even get in the back door of Studio 54. Right? <laughs> I think, you know, my years, I had kind of, uh, gravitated more toward a hippie lifestyle, living in Vermont, so on yeah. and so forth. And Steve was starting to live this glam life, you know, uh, with the discos yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and this you know, ulterior, uh, ulterior. Yeah, uh, it was a uh, whole different uh, shtick. Yeah, it's too funny. 
from surfer dude to discotheque dude. Right. Yeah. I, I Ultimately, got, got you know, he went back to being a surfer dude yeah. because that's where his heart lay. Yeah. He's a regular guy and he just likes yeah. to surf, you know, it's like, yeah. it gets in your blood. Um, Indeed. Now I got to bring this up, but we, we can't corroborate this, but there's rumors that maybe he was a stand in for John Travolta in Saturday night fever. Yeah, there were, there were those rumors, but you know, I've, I've never gotten to the bottom of it. And yeah. uh, so I can't, I can't say for sure, but I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> You know, it's unfortunate his agent just passed away a couple of years ago. We could have, yes, we could have cornered him. He oh, I know, known, right? Dan, and yeah. Dan ended up living on the Outer Banks. Yeah, Steve I brought think he passed me away to, down here. I think. Yes, I do believe he brought his uh, his uh, <clears throat> his close friends from up there. He he showed them all the all the sweet things about the Outer Banks, yeah. and they caught the fever too. Exactly, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So there was a show probably back in the 70s called Mork and Mindy, and Mindy was played by a lady named Pam Dauber. Mm -hmm. And somehow she and Steve started dating. Is that accurate? You know, I don't know if they dated or if they became friends. It, she may yeah. have been affiliated with Wilhelmina, you know. I know. I, I, I researched her, too, and I think she did start out as a model. I think she also did so he may have met her in plays those, or something, yeah. He may have met her along those lines, and um, he hmm. moved out to California, you know, maybe to do some work in L.A. for a time. Right. Right. And um, he ended up living uh, at her place on Hollywood Beach. Right. Or and Manhattan did, Beach. Manhattan Beach, that's what it was. He did mention Pam Dauber to me, um, you know, in just casual conversation. Mm -hmm. And he never he never mentioned anything romantic. So they were probably no, just friends. They were probably just friends. That yeah. would be my guess. Uh, he did bring up uh, Tom Berenger. Um, so I guess they were all kind of in the same circle, young actors and yeah. Hollywood I would people. imagine that. I mean, that seems right to me. Funny. He met uh, a lot of people, and he would, you know, once in a while he'd drop it in in passing. He wasn't too much of a name dropper kind no. of guy, but no. once in a while he it would come up in conversation, and he would he would share his story. Yeah, I but, asked him. I, I when he brought up Pam Dauber, I just right out asked him. I said. Anybody else I might recognize? And he said, yeah, Tom Berenger, Tom's brother, I guess. I, I don't even know what Tom's brother does, but, or if, if what. But yeah, he was, he was very casual about it. Yeah. Um, how, how long do you think he was out in California? Um, I don't think he was out there too long, but I mean, lo long mm. enough to rent a place. So, you know, maybe six months. He probably yeah. sublet her place for a while, if if I had to guess. Right. So at some point he wanders back um, to New York City, we think, because along the way, and I guess maybe he was splitting time. You know what? He must have been splitting time because between New York City and he was. Um, the Outer Banks, because Anne, his second wife, told me that um, they met on the Outer Banks when <laughs> she saw him DJing and uh, immediately was kind of turned off by him. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she, she probably thought, was. Who is this crazy guy? She said the story she said, which I find hilarious, is that uh, I think they were at Kelly's. She was at Kelly's just hanging out. And uh, he comes in for a show and he's on a motorcycle and rides the motorcycle into the restaurant, revving the engine the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds right, too. <laughs> which, yeah. you know, is classic Steve. And I'm thinking that wouldn't fly these days. You know, things yeah. must have been pretty loosey goosey back then. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, what I recall, too, is that um, he was in a surfing accident. He, uh, he got hit by a surfboard and had to right. be stitched up. She did the stitching. Right. So, that's how they met. <laughs> that's how they met. Yeah. She, she said he probably he, saw him do his act and said, oh, my God. Exactly. You know, can't you see? And, oh, my God. <laughs> the, the story she told me, if I'm remembering correctly, is that she kind of had to get talked into, you know, going out to dinner with this guy. I mean, he was a handsome guy. And, and yeah. I could, I get it, you know. But yeah. I think Anne was like, you know. A little more reserved of that nature, yes. Right. She she saw one side of him. Uh, yeah. I'm sure she she wasn't she was probably uh, leery. Uh, 
leery that there was another side, <laughs> yeah. a not so dramatic side. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so, you know, when, so I met Steve, you know, the, the Steve, the dream act was pretty dormant because he was pretty busy with his girls. They were very young. Mm -hmm. He yeah. didn't have time to, you know, go out at night. And I guess when they started getting old enough, uh, he was going to uh, re um, introduce uh, that. Restart the whole, re reintroduce yeah. Steve the Dream, maybe yes. a more kinder, more family friendly Steve the Dream. Not That's as really true. Yes. As, as he was before. He and, was pretty uh, rude before. And I remember, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, the, <laughs> Steve the Dream was a fairly rude character uh, back really? in the, in the, uh, in the um, you know, all, all good natured. Yeah, but, in the uh, 70s, no, yeah. In his, I heard it was, 70s, yeah. it was yeah. adult humor, probably yes. a lot of potty humor. You know? Yes, yes. Good thing there was no cell phones back then. No, right? <laughs> I know. We're probably really, really lucky on that. <laughs> yeah, so um, so let's see. Uh, oh, and um, was it our, 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 our friend Ellie Ward said that, um, it's like, yeah, he's got this uh, persona called Steve the Dream. It's kind of like Fonzie. You know, yeah, spinning records like okay, well, yeah, let's see what it's like. And it was definitely a surprise. It's part, definitely a part of Steve I'd never seen before. <laughs> That's fun. That's very fun. Yeah, that was that was the guy that everybody probably knew. You know, the the exactly. gang from Seafair and uh, you right. know all of his guys, right? His surfing buds. That's probably who he knew. They knew him as, right? And um, so. He meets Anne on the Outer Banks, and uh, we're, we're not exactly sure, but they had a, uh, I guess Steve still had an apartment up in New York City, so maybe oh, yeah. he was still doing some work, I don't know. Anne he was doing was... back and forth that time. At that time, okay. he definitely was still working in New York. He was, okay. that was a definite. <clears throat> and I think Anne, I think she mentioned she worked in the emergency room at New York Hospital, New York City Hospital or something like that, or New, University. New York University. Mm -hmm. New York University. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, um, you know, I think uh, that's where they met Ellie. That would make that's sense because yeah, she was the nurse as well. And I think I heard her saying something about the emergency yeah. room. And um, they were they were great friends in New York and yeah. around the time Claire was born. Right. So so Claire was Steve and Ann's first daughter. Yes. And uh, I guess at some point they say, well, let's go raise this kid on the Outer Banks. It'd probably be a little bit easier. <laughs> Yes, I think so. Right. I think it's probably true. And as, as shortly after, that's shortly thereafter, I I kind of got to know Steve. We have mm -hmm. uh, his second daughter, Audra, and my daughter are the same age. They're in the same. We were in the same preschool together, and, and uh -huh. Steve and I would just, you know, tag team the kids and try to try to keep our heads above water. Uh, yep. It was it was quite amusing to to stay at home dads just fumbling and yeah, not too many of those place. around back then, huh? Yeah. You guys yeah. were on the cutting edge. <laughs> cutting edge of what? I have no idea. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> but somehow we survived. Oh, Indeed. my gosh. Yeah. Um, I really don't know how to wrap this up. I mean, that's kind of the, the history. Um, is, is there anything? I mean. Yeah, going forward, you probably know as much as I do and probably even better. You know, his days at Kitty Hawk Kites and. Um, yeah. I would, you know, know, my I, time living on the Outer Banks, he wasn't there. Um, is that right? Yeah, he. I lived there from seventy-five to seventy-seven, I guess seventy-eight. Wow. And uh, yeah, so he he wasn't th living there then. He he came to visit a few times, but he was most of the time in New York City, um, yeah. is my recollection during those years, and then. Uh, Soon thereafter, he, after, you know, when they started their family and everything, right. that's when he came back down. Tell me, just going back a little bit, uh, tell me the story about you coming down to visit him. I think you were in high school. You had to take the bus down. Yes. Well, so that was the, that was when he was living uh, um, there working as a baker. And I think he did the bakery job because he could get up really early in the morning and do all of his work and then get out and go surf. Right. And then at night he would do work at the seafair. <laughs> of course. So yeah. in the middle of the day, he had his day free to go, you know, hit the, hit the water, get wet as he right. used to say. 
And so you, you, you can't remember all the details, but you seem to remember maybe a oh, bus Oh, I remember ride. taking the bus. I remember taking the bus. It took me a while to get there. I was living in, um, in Vienna, and right. I don't know if I was in high school or it was probably between high school and college, and I think I just took the bus down. No, I would have been if I had been driving. It would it would have probably been high school, and yeah. Uh, yeah so I took the and bus you, down. And we they think maybe the up. bus took you to Elizabeth City. Maybe I think it, I went to Elizabeth City, and they picked me up there. He right. and Grace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good time. Um, <laughs> yep. You know, one time, you know, so I I picked up surfing very late in life. Jeez, I was probably forty five or something, and uh, and Steve was, you know, just supportive and you know always always willing to give me some advice and help mm -hmm. and uh, one time i was uh hanging out at the house it, mm -hmm. it was fall beautiful fall day nothing right super important going on in my life and i get a call it's like john this is steve uh your eyewitness surf report <laughs> <laughs> i'm standing on the beach in kitty hawk and there's a wave with your name on it <laughs> so i just looked at yeah. my wife she said just go <laughs> Like, yeah. So I did what Steve would do. I grabbed my board and I went surfing. <laughs> Off you went, you know, because that's, you know, he was the most happy. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say he was extremely happy, entertaining. I mean, he, always in his glory when he could make somebody laugh. I mean, he right. just, you could, it, it fed his soul. You, you knew yeah. that. And uh, he also just, when he could get out there and surf, I mean, he was just such a happy man. Yeah. Such a happy man. I think yeah. he felt more comfortable in his skin there than anywhere else. Sure. Yeah. And then, then uh, later uh, he became a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> there's a Who would have ever thought a... that? I mean, it, it fits. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that, that right. tricorn hat fits better than you could imagine. But, <laughs> and, yeah. And it, and it came, the timing was pretty good for him because pirates were in, you know, yeah, at that right? point in time. That they, worked they were out pretty well. popular. And there was a restaurant <laughs> down here. The restaurant didn't last long, but it was a good restaurant. I liked it. It's actually about a quarter mile from where I'm sitting right here. It's uh, Pamlico Jack's. Right. And he would just come in and dress, dress as a pirate and entertain the people waiting in line. You know? Yes. And, you know, that was such a great, I mean, he, it, that was a great costume and everything. And it was almost like when he put it on, he could just really become Pimlico Jack, you know? Yeah. Um, I want to say that the uh, costumers from the Lost Colony made that, you oh. know, oh yeah. And they made it, um, you know, it was very accurately, uh, the seamstress very accurately made that that costume uh, on based on you know pirate knowledge. Yeah, That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean it really, uh, yeah. He he really enjoyed that character. I think <laughs> maybe a so, little too much. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is um, I had uh, a young lady that was working for me as a windsurfing instructor, mm -hmm. and uh, and I knew her future husband. Uh, he was a lacrosse guy, and uh, they said, "Yeah, we went to Pamlico Jacks and we sat down, and this pirate sat down at our table, started talking to us." <laughs> I said, "That's Steve. <laughs> I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, he left a lot of memories in that sense, and uh, you know, uh, the other funny thing is he he found this little self employment niche. I mean, he did weddings. He officiated weddings, which I I said. Do, do you dress up as, as Steve the Dream for the wedding? She's like, sometimes they want Steve the Dream to do the wedding. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, definitely, definitely a memorable experience. And then, um, of course, he would entertain the people dressed as a pirate. And he also, there's a there's a diner here called Grit's Grill. And mm -hmm. they would pay him to turn records outside of Grit's Grill while people just were waiting in line people. just yeah. for breakfast. You know, we're not even like, you know, not in the evening, but he'd be right. there in the morning just turning records. Uh, yeah. Just occupying the people while they waited. So too funny. And he he was good at that, wasn't he, John? Yeah. He had a knack for yep. for entertain finding the thing to make people smile. Yep. I would uh, <laughs> bump into him at Kitty Hawk Kites, and and uh, he had his props. You know, he just started whipping out the props with limbo poles and you know all kinds yep. of crazy stuff. It just just hilarious, you know. Yes. Yes. Yep. That's him. 
he he was a he was a hoot. Every uh, holiday was more of a holiday when he would be able to come and join us. I know yeah. that. Yeah, the kids all every he just he's one of those guys that brightened the room just stepping into it. You know, he just had that extra thing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, I forget now? Did you say? Did you tell me some story about him enter, leaving like entertaining messages or something like that? Oh yeah, he definitely did that. He used to call, <laughs> and he would, you know, it would be in pirate speak. In fact, I still have. <laughs> I still have. That's one of the ones that I still have uh, because I, you know, he, he didn't expect him to be gone. I didn't expect him to right. be gone. So right. uh, I scrambled the way, and the, saved that. <laughs> yeah, good one. Definitely. Good yeah. One. By the way, our, the so he and I go to the same church, and uh, I think the pastor dropped a hint that yeah, you know, getting messages from Steve in all hours of the day and night, you know, just random statements or random questions. Yes. You know? Like yeah. you had a hotline with the pastor to just get yeah. stuff. Too funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know that was that was him to a T because. You know, in his later years, and one of the things I think any of the people who know him, you know, he always had a habit of uh, patting his patting his pockets to see if he had his wallet and his keys and all of his belongings, because you know he right. he had a lot on his mind apparently, and you know had a hard time time keeping track. But the other thing right. is, he would write on bits and pieces of paper. He would write down just like inspirational things or proverbs or just little you know just little messages to himself when he passed and i went into his place to clean up there were bits and pieces just so many uh, you know <laughs> the man had a lot on his mind and he clearly had to get it out and write it right. down on things and uh you know the things that I take away when I think back about my brother, you know, I, you know, I loved him very much. He was a pretty special guy, you know, just being a brother, um, aside from his persona sure. and, uh, his, but his, his real self was very much like that persona. It was full of, uh, joy. And, uh, he, he also, um, He just had a unique, unique way of looking at things that uh, right. he, he was sweet. I miss him. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. It's hard to believe he's been gone this long, eh, John? I know. He's a larger than life guy. He, he doesn't really, he doesn't fade away. Right. It's, he's just not here. <laughs> right. And that part sucks. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, many years ago, he 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 was just joking around, <clears throat> and he said something about, "Hey, we um, uh, like, you know, um, well, Wayne's World. You know the movie Wayne's World? Yes. Okay, so goofy movie. I enjoy it because I have a goofy sense of humor. Yeah. Um, and and there's probably a little bit of Steve in that movie, <laughs> but yeah. um, um, you know, he, Steve mentioned something like, "You and I should have a uh." A cable TV show, you know, and I just kind of laughed. I thought about what would that look like, um, yes. <laughs> you know, him him doing some persona and me just trying to be the straight man, feeding him, <laughs> you know, more stuff. But you know, now here I am trying to start this podcast, and I'm thinking he and I could have had an awesome podcast, and it would just oh, been God. so easy to produce, and just the two oh, of us in front of a mic, just him telling stories and me feeding him some. Oh my raw God. Meat, you know, <laughs> just so you could... <laughs> yeah, you know. It would have been awesome. It would have. It would have, John. It would have. Yeah. So. Well. Hmm. I yeah. told you this would happen. <laughs> I know. It just doesn't take much. If I think hard about it, I don't have to think hard about it. Okay. <clears throat> so, anyway, and we have Audra here. In Savannah. Oh, really? That's right. I think I heard yeah. that. She lived with us for a time, and uh, she is, uh, so we get to see her on the regular, and if there was ever anybody 
to bring Steve back, all you have to do is look in her eyes. <laughs> My goodness. Too funny. Yeah, yeah. She And she has mannerisms from time to time that, you know, it's him. <laughs> so, yeah. So Kids he's will do still, that. Yeah, they'll do that for you. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, any other any other stories you want to share before we wrap this up? No, I think I think we've hit some of the high <laughs> notes. You know, I just right. uh, you probably have all the best the best stuff from his later years. You know, just little little nuggets, but this this stuff is gold. I love to hear it, and um, I appreciate you filling in all the holes. Well, it was my pleasure, it really right. was. Thanks for asking me. My pleasure. Thanks for being on the show. All right. Thanks, John. What a great story, and what a great guy. I really miss Steve, and I really appreciate his sister coming on the show and talking with me. I also want to thank Steve's wife, Ann Thomas, for answering my questions on the phone and helping me to connect with Becky. As always, if you have any questions or want to check out what we're up to, go to treasuresoftheouterbanks.com. Until next time.